Hey all, today we are covering how sugar affects women differently. We're gonna cover some really fascinating stuff. We're gonna touch on how it affects the skin differently with women and how you might see more wrinkles and more just rubbery, kind of leathery skin. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the hormones. We're gonna talk about estrogen a little bit and talk about PCOS. I know not everyone has PCOS, but it still plays a big role. Then we're gonna jump into the thyroid, okay? Which is something we have to talk about because women are much more prone to thyroid disease. And then lastly, we're gonna to touch on just the different hormonal cycles and how that relates to what you eat and how that relates to overall insulin resistance, which therefore slows down a lot of different processes. So sugar, we all like to bash it. So now let's just talk about how it's a little bit more specific with women. Hey, please do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and that bell icon. That way you can always see our daily videos. Let's jump in. First thing I wanna to touch on is skin. You've seen those people walking around that have really blotchy skin. It's like they're, they're really red, but it's blotchy. That's usually a sign of insulin resistance, which definitely has a big tie in with sugar. But let's talk a little bit about wrinkles here. Okay, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that just a small 50 gram increase of carbohydrates per day led to a pretty darn significant increase in wrinkles in women. Now, we could say that this argument's true for men and women, but generally speaking, we see a lot more of wrinkles appear in women when it's related to sugar. At least that's what I've seen. Okay, now here's what's happening. A lot of the problem comes down to what's called glycation. Glycation is where sugar that you consume reacts with proteins in your body to sort of caramelize. Think caramelizing an onion for a minute. You know how it gets kind of a, thick and it gets kind of crusty, okay? Well, that's happening with the proteins that react with sugar in your body. But then those crusty, globby sugar proteins bind to the collagen in your skin and make your skin, well, tough and rugged, okay? We don't want rocky mountain skin, right? We want smooth, supple skin. And this is what's happening with glycation. Now, the British Journal of Dermatology published a study that found that women at the age of 35 can start to see the effects of glycation, probably even younger. Point is, you don't have to be very old to have glycation affect your skin. And this is something that we definitely have to pay attention to for men and women, but sugar is definitely gonna affect something that's important to you, your skin. Next, I'm gonna to touch on insulin resistance and PCOS for a minute. But the purpose of this isn't to talk about PCOS, it's to talk about the testosterone and estrogen relationship. So although it sounds like it's gonna be complicated, I promise to make it very, very simple. But it's important you pay attention because what I'm referencing in this section is going to make sense at the end of this video, which is gonna be your aha moment, I promise you. Okay, here's what's going on. There's an institute called the Child and Family Research Institute in Vancouver that found that when we consume a lot of carbohydrates, those carbohydrates go to the liver, and the liver, if there's too many of them, will turn them into fat. Well, it turns out that an increase in hepatic lipid production ends up shutting down something called sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. Now, what SHBG does is it binds to estrogen and testosterone and it holds them captive for very specific mechanisms within the body. We need SHBG, otherwise we'd have just so much free testosterone and free estrogen that our bodies would pretty much implode, right? So here's what goes on. When it drops SHBG, women get this big surge of estrogen and testosterone. But when it comes down to testosterone, if we have a surge in testosterone, that is a very strong risk factor for PCOS, okay? So the point is, is insulin resistance and insulin issues and carb consumption can have an indirect relationship with testosterone production, therefore triggering PCOS symptoms and all kinds of issues. The thing is, you don't need to be obese or even overweight to be suffering from insulin resistance. So when you look at the research, you find that 70 to 95% of obese women with PCOS have insulin resistance. But then additionally, you find that 30 to 75% of lean, seemingly healthy people with PCOS have insulin resistance. The point is, insulin resistance is the common denominator. Whether you're fat, skinny, short, wide, tall, doesn't matter, okay? We have to do something to control this. Now, I hope that you've stuck with me because now we're getting into the thyroid piece, which in my opinion is very, very complicated and has so many moving pieces, but it's important that we know that the thyroid is such a strong regulator of the metabolism. Okay, and women already are more sensitive to thyroid issues, whether it be hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, okay? Whether your thyroid's too fast or too slow. Metabolism too slow, too fast. Anyhow, point is, let's talk about how sugar affects this. Insulin imitates 
the thyroid hormone in some tissues of the body. Not all, but some. So what that means is when you consume a bunch of sugar and your insulin levels go sky high for a minute, that insulin can go to an area of your body and trick that area of the body into thinking that it's the thyroid hormone. So visualize this. You just consume the chocolate bar and that sugar triggers an insulin spike. Well, that insulin goes to some specific tissues in your body and tells that tissue that it's thyroid. It's an imposter, it's a Trojan horse. Well, that means that your body thinks you have enough thyroid hormone. So that communicates to the brain, oh, we can slow down thyroid production because we've got plenty on hand. But in reality, you don't really have plenty on hand. You've got insulin, which just is looking like thyroid. So therefore, your thyroid levels drop. Okay, well, what happens when your thyroid levels drop? Your metabolism slows down. And when your metabolism slows down, that means that insulin, when you eat those carbs, doesn't process as fast, so it stays in the bloodstream longer. Normally, if you have a fast metabolism, insulin goes up and comes back down. But if your metabolism is slow, insulin goes up and it kind of stays up. And guess what? That means more Trojan horses. More Trojan horses communicating that there's plenty of thyroid there, which means the metabolism slows down even more. So you can see how this poses a serious, serious issue. Now I'm about to get into the really wild stuff that I think you're just gonna really like because quite frankly, now I'm a guy, so I'm saying this wholeheartedly, you're gonna like it because you can finally turn to your friends that are guys and say, I told you so, <laughs> okay? You think you're gonna love this. Before I jump into that, I do wanna just make a quick recommendation. If you're trying to kick sugar, you're trying to get healthier, I do recommend Noosh. Okay, their slogan is just say noosh to sugar. They've created these really good, tasty little like cookies and cakes that have no sugar in them. And the whole mission of the company is to get people off of sugar. So they're made with organic flax, they're made with coconut. They've got some really good, tasty stuff in there. And they're super awesome. They're a big supporter of this channel and they've offered up special discounts for anyone that watches this video. So it doesn't matter whether you're female or not. I just highly recommend you check them out. So I put a link down below in the description. After you watch this video, just do yourself a solid and check them out. And even if it's not for you. If you're looking for a way to support this channel, supporting sponsors like this and companies that are aligned with me is a great way to do so. So just a big thank you to Noosh and a big thank you to you guys for checking them out. Now let's go ahead and let's move in to the big piece. When you are going on your cycle, you obviously have changes in estrogen and progesterone. Well, it's pretty widely known that when estrogen levels are high, appetite is lower. High levels of estrogen tend to satiate you. But when your estrogen levels drop and your progesterone levels go up, you get ravenously hungry. And this is a proven fact. It's not just something that's created through marketing. It really does happen. The Journal of Physiology and Behavior states that on average, when the progesterone levels go up and estrogen levels go down, women consume an additional 238 calories per day. That's scary, that's a lot of calories. So I'm gonna give you a visual and I'm gonna have something pop up on the screen to make it really easy to understand because this is the cycle that we have to be careful of. And it references a lot of the things that I've talked about in this video, so I hope you've paid attention, but either way, we'll try to make it simple. So you start to go on your cycle. Progesterone levels go up, estrogen levels go down. So you get crazy cravings. So you go and you grab a chocolate bar because food marketing has led us to believe that women only like chocolate, okay? So you consume a bunch of chocolate. Well, then what happens? Well, the sugar triggers a big insulin spike. Okay? And that big insulin spike triggers that decrease in sex hormone binding globulin. Okay, remember we talked about that? So insulin goes up from the chocolate bar, sex hormone binding globulin goes down. That means all of a sudden you have a bunch of estrogen releasing into the body. This free estrogen is a problem because it's too much at one time and that increases fat storage as one problem. That's already a bummer. But the bigger problem long term is this. The increase in estrogen causes an increase in thyroid binding globulin, which is a globulin that binds to thyroid. So whatever thyroid you did have floating around the bloodstream, a good amount of it or a fair amount of it gets bound to this thyroid binding globulin, therefore reducing the efficiency and the effectiveness of the thyroid that's in your blood because it can't get to where it's going. So ultimately decreasing your thyroid and potentially decreasing your metabolism. So you can see how the choices that you make during your cycle or during your high progesterone phases can make a big difference in your overall metabolism long term. So that's why it's safe to say, based upon just the hormonal structuring of the day-to-day -day life for a woman, 
it's gonna be more important that you pay attention to sugar. And I know it's kind of a bummer to hear that, but I guess at the end of the day, you just gotta take it for what it's worth. So as always, do make sure you hit that subscribe button and keep it locked in here on my channel for daily videos. I'll see you soon.